Hi, I'm Aaron Westbrook. And I'm Avin Jogia, and this is RealWorks. The life of an artist is not easy, and so most kids who want to pursue their dreams are told to give up. But what happens when you identify everything you are through your creative self? These next three students look at art not only as an interest, but also as a life-saving force. My grandma believes a plate of food can fix anything. I agree. Zing! Oh my god, baby! Oh, George, why are you so fat? <laughs> she's not fat, Grandma. Why is she so fat? Look at she's come up the last time I saw her. She wasn't like this. I'm glad I'm seeing my eyesight. And you're not a no train. So what's the menu? Salad. Some steak and soup for your soup potato. Of course, I had a plantain there that I stick in. Always have to have plantain. Not too much of seasoning. Black pepper, a little bit of salt, paprika, a little bit of um, Italian seasoning. This is what you call a quick dinner. I'm not a lover of meat, but I'm so tired of chicken that once a year I have a steak. So. And this is your annual coming. steak? Yeah, this is my annual steak. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I should let it rest a while, all the nice juice coming out. So we'll do the, the, um, the moving tomorrow, then we'll come back and we'll have a little cooking session. I teach you to make calorie before, didn't I? Um, you did, but I wasn't paying very close attention. Now you need the teaching. You're going to make the sour. You're going to take some um, apple and some mango. Anything we put your hands on and grate it up and put some onion and pepper and make the delicious sour. And I'll show you how to mix the, um, the flour. And you have a fine bit of frying. This is just steam yellow peas, which we call split peas, and we're going to make some flurry. Grandma's kitchen, her accent, her way of cooking, they're all strong reminders that life didn't begin in America for my family. Normally I would make flurry with yeast, you know, yeah. set the yeast, but it's a harder, um, when you do yeast, it, you got to know what you're doing because it takes a little bit of a adjusting with the oil because it could come a little oily if you don't know how to so we're gonna do it with some baking powder this is some baking powder we have the water and the baking powder in there Now we need to taste it. Flavor. A 
we can either leave it like this mm -hmm. or we can put a little bit more salt because you can make the sour real spicy I visited Guyana about two years ago in August. Never in my life have I felt so disconnected, ignorant, and American. It wasn't until I sat down at my aunt's canteen and ate a plate of food that I felt at peace. That first bite of curry goat immediately took me to a place so much more familiar than this country I bore claim to. The feeling of familiarity and nostalgia intermingled with the spices and texture of the food, and I was immediately brought to my grandma's kitchen. It was in that moment that I truly felt Guyanese. pepper sauce and it's so spicy that you can just smell how hot it is. All right, that's a lethal amount. Grandmother made. Get that clove of garlic in there. Here's a mixture of olive oil, water, salt, and pepper to thin it out a bit. What do you miss the most about Guyana, Grandma? The easy life. No winter. No fall. You can walk to anywhere, go wherever you like. Let me know nothing like that. All right, Tagging. I can't get the shape right. No, Polari, the house Polari don't got no shape right. But the yours flower. are nice circles and mine are lumps. I think you're doing a great job. You're supposed to say that. You're my grandma. Because, look, you got to wet your hand. And then, oh. look, you pinch it like this. And then you do it like this. Okay, let me wash my hand. Just put your hand, wet your hand a little bit. You just roll it off a little bit and try to drop it. Do it like this when you're dropping it. Okay. Uh -huh. I love this sour. You look sweet and you create your own sour. This is just enjoyable. How's my first sour? Delicious. <laughs> Lazy work, but delicious. <laughs> It's life where I'm from, where I'm from. A mod play where Izzy, where I'm from, where I'm from. It be like run your coat black. Jupiter keeps a fat beat spot a pack where I'm from. Nappy hair is like we be reading marks where I'm from. The kids be rocking clocks where I'm from. You turn around your cap. You talk over. My name is Georgia Ray, and the name of my film is Setting the Table. Grandma's kitchen, her accent, her way of cooking. They're all strong reminders that life didn't begin in America for my family. My entire family is from Guyana, but I was born in Brooklyn, and so I consider myself Guyanese American. And um, definitely in terms of being connected to the culture, I'm not so great with that, but the one thing that I've been able to maintain, the one connection that I've always had, is definitely the food, because the food is a huge part of my upbringing. how we view food, it's not as respected as it should be because literally everybody has to eat and everybody has a certain food that they enjoy eating and 
a good plate of food, no matter where you're from, I think it's equally understood all around the world, no matter where you are. So is cooking an art? Yeah, definitely, I think so. It's the mixture of spices and flavors and all the different aspects that go into it. It's so, it has to be so, it has to be done so specifically and it's so artfully. It, it definitely is an art. It takes creativity and it takes precision and passion, <laughs> for sure. So what's the menu? Salad, some steak, and super, super data. Of course, I had a plant in there that I stick in. Shooting this film was an eye-opener for me in terms of learning a bit more about my family, I guess, and learning how even though it seems like such a trivial thing, food is definitely like this sort of lifeline that is that families use to pass down culture and tradition. And I don't know, I just feel like it deserves a lot more respect. And How was my first hour? Delicious. <laughs> Lazy work, but delicious. Rob Yulfo was a quiet kid who always felt a little bit like an outsider until he discovered that he could literally make friends through his art. Check out his award-winning film, Clay Life. I love working with clay. The fact that you can mold it and shape it into anything you like is sort of like life. If you don't like the way it's going, you can change it, like I'm doing right now. <laughs> to get where I want in life, it requires I change everything, every aspect of my life, my friends, and myself. I have many dreams. I would love to be a filmmaker. I would also love to be a rock star, but I suck at singing and I can't play any instruments. One of my main dreams is to become a stop motion animator. I discovered it when I was a kid. I made a couple of short films and people liked them. So I decided to take it more seriously. The clay became my pal. I'd go home right after school and work with it. I had no friends to hang out with anyway. But things in life change. Like I said before, I have many friends now. Well, not that many, but just enough. You know what uh, MTV should be called, man? I think it should be called MTV. My friends inspire me in a way. They have so many characteristics. The metalhead, the computer nerd, the pro skateboarders. But my best friend is my girlfriend, Tizel. Hey! Hi! She's very supportive of me. What I love about her the most is that she also loves cartoons like me. She also loves to feel the work I'm choosing to go into. Robert has a huge problem with, uh, you know, being social and, uh, you know, his shyness uh, affects him a lot. And the fact that um, he's sort of afraid of failure and he's really shy. But that's what I love about him. I love the fact that he's extremely shy because it just uh, makes you want to know more about him, I guess. This year I'm graduating from high school. I'm going to college to pursue my career. But doing that means I have to leave my friends behind. I feel like I just stepped into reality and I'm being forced to leave it again. And I don't think I'm ready for it.
but I do want to continue my dream, and I shouldn't let anything stop it. It's just as a part of me as my heart. Just because I'm having fun now, it's better if I leave it before it leaves me. I'm always gonna remember him as a as a friend to us. So once he leaves the school, he's gonna be who? We're gonna miss him. And I love him. We're gonna miss him. And I love Papa Fat. Yo, clutch, man. So even though leaving my friends is kind of rough, I know I have to. Come on. That ends the day. I don't want a regular job, like a garbage man or a toll booth guy. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure they're good people. I just don't want that kind of job. I want to work with Clay, because that's my life and that's my original best friend. Our next film features a student who identifies as an artist, but whose family would rather have him pursue a career doing something more practical. Here's Pursuing Happiness. When I'm painting or creating any art, I feel like I'm living in my own little planet. I travel into an abstract world where there's no judgment and I can be as creative as I want. That's what's important to me because that's what brings me happiness. my life I found my meditation, my happiness and creativity in art and I want to use art to make a change in the world and I want to use my art to connect to people. To me, art is a superpower and I think it can get rid of the gun violence, the bullying and the negativity that goes around in my community. At a young age, I felt I didn't belong or fit in with the other kids in my school. I spoke a different language and I wanted to draw instead of playing sports like the other kids in my school. Because I didn't have the same interests as the other kids, I felt forced to change and fit in. I felt trapped. I would deal with the stress of feeling trapped through art. When I would draw, I felt free, relieved. I felt like me, Ronlin, the artist. But my parents try to force me onto another path. They don't support my dream to be an artist. Instead, they say, you should be a nurse, a doctor, or an accountant. So when you and daddy um, first came to America, like, what did you think? What, what did I think? Like, yeah, like, when you and daddy first came to America, like, what did you want to do? Go to school. Go to school? Learn English, and then go to work. Go to work? Yes, to pay our bill. All right. So do you think, like, being an artist is a career? So, everybody is different. Everybody like different, diff different, different things. Yeah, everybody like to do different things. Uh, but you want a job that pays money. Yes, I love money because if you don't have money, how come you going to pay your bill? Yeah. To eat. Like I'm doing my salad, I make money and then I buy my salad. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. I sometimes think my mom doesn't believe that art is a job. It's just a bunch of nonsense that doesn't make any money. My twin sister, Wuline, is studying nursing. And in my mom's eyes, she set up for a better life. I don't think that mommy doesn't support your um, art career. I just think that she wants the best for you. Like, she wants you to have your own house. She wants you to have able to take care of your kids in the future. She wants you to have a car. She wants you to have all these beautiful things because we see it as New Yorkers see it every day, how hard it is, how much of a struggle it is. In the train station, when we see people asking for money, but we can't really give it to them because we need it ourselves too, to pay our bills and take care of our family members.
my art teacher Una is one of my biggest inspiration. A child educated only in school is an uneducated child. This is more applicable for our community than any other community. You gotta have both pieces of knowledge, right? Stop running from your ancestral greatness. Take the steps that you need to take to know who the greats are in our world. A lot of students haven't even heard of the civil rights movement or the civil rights era. Have no idea when it happened. Um, I feel as though like history just keeps repeating itself. You know, like things are just like things that happened in the past are just happening again. Yeah. And we like things won't change if we don't like change ourselves individually. That's right. And you know, like just encourage others to do better. What makes me inspire and motivate people, especially the younger generation, because I want them to thrive. I want them to own this world. I want them to know it's theirs, that they have the opportunities to do great things. I don't think art is something that you settle for. I think art is something that you aspire to do and be great at, right? Art is a, a very viable career option. Unfortunately, a lot of people, adults, parents, are worried about their children making a long-term and sustainable living where they have health care, health insurance, um, a constant paycheck. I think it's very important for artists to be in their communities and I think their art always can make a change, whether it's a socio-economic impact type of change or whether it's just a change where they're bringing greater beauty into certain spaces. So I think artists should always aspire to work within their communities, but they should also work on a global level. I have a plan to impact communities and inspire youth to follow their dreams, no matter how hard it seems. In my community, I see abandoned empty spaces that are being wasted. What I want to see is something useful like art galleries. Real Works and Art gave me a voice to express myself. Now I'm going to put my story out there to inspire other young artists like me. Hi, my name is Ronald Florvius and the name of my film is Pursuing Happiness. My film is about me and wanting to pursue my art career. There was like a few doubts in my life because, you know, I've just been getting feedback that, you know, like not many artists can make it in the world. I don't think that mommy doesn't support your um, art career. I just think that she wants the best for you. Like she wants you to have your own house. She wants you to have able to take care of your kids in the future. She wants you to have a car. She wants you to have all these beautiful things because we see it as New Yorkers see it every day, how hard it is, how much of a struggle it is. My mother is a nurse. She kind of viewed things a little differently because she kind of like got to see the perspectives from my teachers who actually like from freshman year to like my senior year actually got to see me grow and then she was really impressed of how well my teacher spoke about being an artist and how important it is to be an artist. Because I want them to thrive. I want them to own this world. I want them to know it's theirs, that they have the opportunities to do great things. I don't think art is something that you settle for. I think art is something that you aspire to do and be great at. It was important for me to tell that story because, you know, it was like, this was my whole life. And 
as a young kid, you know, I just had these questions. Will I, will I really make it? Will I, you know, will I ever be successful as an artist? It made me like, it really brung out the nerves and made me want to go late at night and like, you know, type in the computer, you know, do artists, can artists really make it in their lives? The most difficult part in making my film was my confidence, my confidence in my film, my confidence in reaching out to other people. Would they benefit from my movie? Will, will I give out the right movie to connect with other young artists to pursue their, to pursue their career of what they want to be? Thanks for joining us. Tune in next time for RealWorks. Uh -huh.